Excellencies, Director General, ladies and gentlemen, to you present here in Vienna and to those who are following us online, welcome to the IEA World Cancer Day event. My name is Sophie Boutot de la Combe, I'm the Director of Communication for the IAEA and I will be your moderator for those events. This year marks the final year of the World Cancer Day campaign, Close the Gap. This campaign echoes the objective of the IEA Rays of Hope initiative, the agency's answer to the unequal distribution of cancer care resources. Cancer is one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality worldwide, with around 19 million new cases and close to 10 million deaths cancer-related every year. More than 60% of the world's total new annual cases occur in low and middle income countries. Countries that have only 5% of the resource dedicated to cancer care. As a consequence, the rising incidence of cancer is further straining the already scarce resource in many countries. Through Rays of Hope, we are mobilizing and channeling resources that support increased access to life-saving diagnosis and radiotherapy equipment to all patients. We are focusing support on countries that have little or no access to radiotherapy, and we are providing the expertise to ensure facilities can run safely and securely into the future. We are raising hope for cancer care for all. Joining us today is Her Excellency Mrs. Kumbize Kondodo Shiponda, the Minister of Health of Malawi, Her Excellency Mrs. Karina Rondo, the Minister of Health of Uruguay, who has provided us with a video recorded message, Tedros Habdano Grebrezus, Director, Director General of the World Health Organization, he is also providing us with a video recorded message. And we have Dr. Raul Doria, the head of the National Care Institute in Paraguay, with us today. As a keynote speaker, we have Bianca Moniz. She's a singer, a songwriter, and a three-time cancer survivor. Finally, please join me in welcoming Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi, who will be giving us his opening remarks for this World Cancer Day event. DG, the floor is yours. Uh, merci, Sophie. Thank you if very you much. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, of course, uh, as, as every year, World Cancer Day offers everybody a possibility to uh, get together around this uh, problem and to think about what we are doing and what needs to be done. Sophie just reminded us about um, some of these very gloomy statistics that we repeat every year, only that every year they are worse. Uh, in terms of uh, cancer cases, uh, death cases derived from those uh, annual cancer cases, and percentages of uh, the world population, in particular in low and middle income countries, which do not have access to adequate cancer services and care. Um, listening and reading about those dismal statistics um, uh, was the reason why um, two years ago, in fact, a little bit more than that, we decided to um, um, not only repeat yearly these statistics and uh, make repeated calls for action um, or messages, but rather put together a program that would start delivering and would start changing this reality uh, in the world and in particular in low and middle income uh, countries. And this, uh, this was, of course, building on many years of efforts here in Vienna, but also elsewhere. And we will soon hear from uh, my good friend, Dr. Tedros, from WHO, because this is, of course, uh, an effort that has many, many partners and many people around the world Working, working on this. But Race of Hope was trying and was inspired, and we are trying to do that, to uh, provide uh, a very flexible, very adaptable 
um, instrument uh, that would allow us to improve. Um, and doing it with a real uh, added value. There are many partnerships in this area, we know it. Nationally, regionally, there are other uh, in institutions, uh, um, countries working on this. Um, the difference here is that the IEA has this global reach, has this uh, universal understanding of where the needs are, has technical capacities, and has all this community in partnership with us. Um, comprising, of course, the public sector in every country participating in the initiative, and also uh, quite decisively, and we hope in a more, in a much more uh, impactful way in the future, the private sector um, as, as well. I can tell you, and I can see that there is an increasing conviction that we need to work together and we need to work differently. Let me put an example. I was, a few, just a few days ago, I was participating in this big, important international gathering of, in Davos, the World Economic Forum. This is a place where mainly very powerful people, pol politicians and, and, and people from the finance world and, and uh, entrepreneurs um, get, get together. So it was very good that we could be there and getting a lot of attention when we were talking about Race of Hope and that we were able to start um, establishing partnerships and for the first time having big companies coming to us and wanted to know a little bit more. Of course, I would like that to be faster and, and that results be felt more immediately. But we see that the wheels are turning and Race of Hope is already delivering and we will hear from you, for example, from, from my uh, colleagues in, in Paraguay, uh, near to my own country. So we will see how this is, how this is happening. Um, Race of Hope, as many other things about the IEA, is not about talk. It's about doing things. It's about bringing radiotherapy, concrete radiotherapy, the hardware and also the training, so that we can have a better situation uh, in, in every country. So this is why I want to thank you. Seeing a room like this, so full with people, ambassadors, permanent missions who are so important for, for this effort, and also people from capitals um, getting together on this important day is really uh, heartwarming. But this is just the beginning. You will see in the course of the program we, we have that um, the needs are enormous globally and also in terms of race of hope. We have already, we are approaching 80 countries, 80 countries that have requested uh, to be included and to benefit from uh, race of hope in different ways. As you know, race is a program that has an adaptable format um, with different um, uh, offers, if I can put it like that, depending on the cancer situation in each country. The situation in Malawi is not like the, the situation in Paraguay. To only take the examples of the distinguished yeah, colleagues here on my, on, on my right. So that requires uh, different approaches and different solutions. But I want to give you this uh, um, as an example of the enormous needs we have in front of us. So um, I thank you again for, for being here. Uh, I think this opportunity, and I hope this opportunity will be very useful for all of us to get uh, an update of wh where we are. As you know, we had a first batch of uh, seven countries, including yours, um, in, um, in Africa and, and elsewhere. We are now working on, this, on, on, on a second, I would say, level through the anchor uh, countries, and we will have representatives uh, of, uh, of them. And we will want to hear and we will have a discussion soon about this uh, from uh, donor countries, how they are working with us and how we can do uh, more. So really looking forward uh, uh, to that um, and uh, thanking you again for being here with us for now and for the future. We have to make Race of Hope a big, big success. Thank you very much.
Thank you, DG Grossi. Before moving on to the keynote speaker, we will hear from the Director General of the World Health Organization. Director General Rafael Grossi, dear colleagues and friends, two years ago, WHO and the International Atomic Energy Agency joined forces for the Race of Hope Initiative to address long-standing inequities in radiotherapy. Of the 12 million people diagnosed with cancer in low- and middle-income countries, only half have access to radiotherapy. This is just one of many powerful partnerships we have formed in the war on cancer. In 2022, with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we launched the global platform to provide every child with cancer life-saving therapies in 50 countries. We engage the private sector to improve access to HPV vaccination and screening tests to eliminate cervical cancer. We have collaborated with the Islamic Development Bank in women's cancers. Yet, partnerships only take us so far. Success relies on governments investing in cancer. Today, WHO is releasing a report showing that only 39% of countries finance priority cancer services in their health benefit package. This undermines universal health coverage and the sustainability of cancer care. Partnerships must empower governments to succeed in the journey towards UHC. Cancer does not need to be a death sentence or a cause of impoverishment. Let's work together with policymakers and other partners to keep cancer high on the health care agenda. I thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce you to our keynote speaker, Bianca Muniz. She is a singer, songwriter, and three times cancer survivor. Her journey is a source of hope and inspiration, not only to Cation patients, but also to all of us in our commitment to bring cancer care to those who need it the most. She is here today to share her unique experience. Bianca, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of standing before you today as a three-time cancer survivor and advocate. My name is Bianca Muniz. I was first diagnosed with ovarian cancer at 11 years old, then breast cancer at 22, and most recently, lung cancer at 26. My journey through th three cancers thus far has been both a testament to my resilience and a stark reminder of the inequalities that exist in cancer care. I carry with me the TP53 genetic mutation, also known as Lee Fraumini syndrome, a genetic predisposition that has made my battles more complicated. Yet here I am, a living testament to the power of early detection, advanced treatments, and a stroke of geographic privilege. I was born in a place where access to top-notch medical care was not a luxury, but a given. Unfortunately, for many around the world, this is not the case. The theme of today's event, Bridging the Gap, resonates deeply within me. My survival story is intricate, intricately woven with the opportunities I had because of where I was born. It pains me to think that if another person with my mutation were born in a less fortunate place, their journey might have been cut short. Access to life-saving treatments like the ones I received should not be determined by the geographical lottery of birth. And I am here to share my story, not just as a narrative of personal triumph, but as a call to action. Cancer, as we all know, does not discriminate. It touches lives across borders, races, and socioeconomic statuses. It is a global challenge that requires a collective global response. The Rays of Hope initiative is a beacon of light in this collective effort. 
This initiative is not just about treating cancer, it's about bringing hope to those who are often left in the shadows of inadequate healthcare systems. It's about giving a fighting chance to the millions who face cancer with resilience but lack the means to combat it. It is a gap that transcends borders and speaks to the very essence of our shared humanity. I'm deeply moved by the commitment from Rays of Hope to help widen access to cancer care. Each patient diagnosed and treated are not just statistics, they are actual lives being transformed. As we celebrate World Cancer Day, let us not only acknowledge the progress made, but also recognize the challenges that lie ahead. There's so much more work to be done, and the future of cancer care should not be determined by where you live or the resources available to your country. I call upon each of you to join hands in this fight to contribute your efforts, your resources, and your voice to bridge the cap in can gap in cancer care. Let us stand together in our commitment to making cancer care accessible to all, regardless of their place of birth or economic status. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca, for sharing your personal story with us. It expresses how cancer diagnosis and treatment are more than offering survival chances for cancer patients. It's also about how it shapes people's life. We are incredibly grateful to have you with us today. We will now hear from recipient countries of the IEA Rays of Hope initiative. To begin, her Excellency Mrs. Karina Rondo, the Minister of Health of Uruguay, has provided us a pre-recorded message. Last December, DG Grossi announced that Uruguay will receive five mammography machines and a linear accelerator through the Trails of Hope initiative. Let's hear more. Good morning to everyone. It's a great honor for me to be part of this opening panel of these forums on Race of Hope. I am grateful for the invitation of the International Atomic Energy Agency authorities. The Director General, Mr. Rafael Grossi, Mr. Lee, Deputy Director, Head of the Department of Technical Cooperation, Mr. Longoya, Director, Division of Latin Americas and the Caribbean, Department of Technical Cooperation, Mr. Abel Da Wab, Director, Division of Human Health. Mrs. Lisa Steven, Director, Program of Action for Cancer Therapy, PAT. And well, working towards cancer care for all is a paramount program that is aligned with the objectives of our ministry. The data obtained from our country from the Impact Project Tool was important to evaluate the capacities and the needs related to cancer prevention, diagnosis, and control. Low-income countries, and also some middle-income countries like Uruguay, may have a lot of difficulties to achieve the international standards. In our case, the lack of economies of scales is a big problem for the acquisition of equipment, but not only one of the problems, there's also others. The impact review request by Uruguay was very helpful on focusing the future efforts of this ministry. We could document the lacks of quality of some diagnosis equipment, like mammographies, the need of improve the quality of radiotherapy in different areas of the country, the necessity of to develop palliative care in most of the providers and the necessity to improve governance from the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Energy. Even if we could deal with many of those problems, for example, today we have 75% of our providers that have palliative care, the governance was improved, two new linear accelerators started to be used after update the maintenance of them, and so on. Nevertheless, more cooperation is needed to be included with equipment and training in different areas. The university hospital does not have a modern linear accelerator to train young doctors. Mammographs should be urgently 
change to ensure a better sensitivity and specificity. Rays of Hope is a program that brings light to all corners of the world, including Uruguay, to ensure its sustainability and maximize its impact. The International Agency of Atomic Energy is mobilizing additional resources, advocacy, and partnership opportunities. Founding is need to build facilities, purchase equipment, and train personnel. It is estimated that 50% of the cancer patients need radiotherapy treatments, and various mechanisms are required for the treatment of that cancer, including simulation units, cobalt machines, and linear accelerators. Significant resources are needed to improve global equity in access to life-saving cancer treatments, says, said Lisa Steven, director of the EAS Division of Program of Action for Cancer Therapy. The goal of Race of Hope is to bring together a global coalition of partners, including member states, the private sector, development agencies, and financial institutions to support countries to establish radiotherapy centers and scale up existing capacities. Through Race of Hopes, the International Agency is integrating its expertise and its donor states to bring hope to minimize inequities along the countries and the populations. In the diagnosis, and treatment of cancer using radiation medicine. Have a wonderful meeting and thank you for giving a chance of hope. The IEA Rays of Hope initiative officially began on World Cancer Day in 2022, as our Director General pointed out, with seven first wave countries, including Malawi. I would like to introduce her Excellencies Mrs. Kumbize Kandodo Shiponda, Minister of Health of Malawi. Mrs. Uh, Shiponda, the floor is yours. The Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Allow me to extend my sincere gratitude to you on extending the invitation for Malawi and me personally to participate in the Rays of Hope Forum that is indeed bringing rays of hope to cancer patients in Malawi. I bring the word of appreciation and the gratitude from His Excellency, the President of Malawi, Dr. Lazarus Makathe Chakwera, and his assurance of our country's commitment and support towards this initiative. I assure you of my delegation's full support and cooperation. Let me also recognize Bianca, who has spoken before me. Bianca, you represent the women in Malawi. You represent the children in Malawi. You represent the men in Malawi. Bianca, what you have said here represents the 400 Malawian patients who have been on a waiting list to go to be referred either to India or South Africa or Kenya for them to have access. Bianca, your word represent over 5,000 Malawians who are still waiting for radiotherapy services or bronchotherapy services in Malawi. So I really, really appreciate your coming here. You are our champion. You are a hero. Your voice represents the voices of so many globally who are waiting, waiting for the initiatives like the ones we are uh, witnessing here, raising the rays of hope, oh, what a name. Indeed, the rays of hope is raising the hope of so many people, especially Malawians. I stand here with uh, uh, a heart uh, filled with gratitude for the support which you have been receiving through IEA, but also through the rays of uh, hope. Our relationship began in 2006. It has been a long journey, but at least now we can see the end at the end of the tunnel. We are so grateful for the technical cooperation and support which we have received so far. 
As Malawi, as a country, we have a 10-year National Cancer Control Strategic Plan that encompasses prevention, also includes screening, treatment of common cancers, and palliative care. Malawi appreciates the support that we has been provided to us. And the International Atomic Agency has supported the sustainable development of Malawi in the areas of agriculture and food as well, but also human health and nutrition, but also water resource management and industrial development, but also radiation safety and waste management and human resource capacity building in the nuclear science and technology. Specifically, the International Atomic Energy Agency assisted our country to develop the bankable document which was used for financial resource mobilization for the construction of the National Cancer Center, the first National Cancer Center in Malawi. The bankable document hoped to secure funding from the government of Malawi and OFID. And through this program and the Raise of Hope initiative, Malawi has benefited from various technical expert missions that have assisted with provision of technical expertise towards the National Cancer Center project, the impact review, among others. Malawi has also benefited from the procurement of radiotherapy and nuclear medicine equipment, as well as fellowship training in cancer-related fields. Director General, your excellencies and colleagues, presently in Malawi, we are under construction of the radiotherapy bankers. Director General, today I bring you good news. We have finished the concrete pouring for the four radiotherapy and the two brachytherapy bankers. And now we are awaiting the curing stage and the later mechanical works and the finish, final finishes to be done. Our projection, Director General, is that uh, come March, we would have finished everything and then we'll send invitation so that you can come and personally be part of the official opening of the first National Cancer Center in Malawi. In terms of equipment, procurement of the radiotherapy and brachytherapy equipment has already been completed with the support from the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency team and we are so grateful for their steadfast support and guidance and we expect to launch the facility, like I said, before May this year. In this regard, we want to extend invitation, not just to you, Director General, but also to your team. And on this note, Director General and colleagues, let me also really uh, express our sincere support to your team, led by uh, Dr. Shokat and his team. Director General, they have been through us with us throughout the process. During this uh, very sensitive uh, stage of the construction of bankers, we are having weekly meetings with them, Zoom meetings, so that they are part of the everyday uh, 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 process of the uh, uh, construction of the bankers. And we are so, so grateful, Dr. Shokat and your team, for the support which you have rendered to our country. Director General and their colleagues, in conclusion, Malawi reaffirms its support to the agency's activities, and we are grateful to the agency for the invaluable contribution towards expanding and promoting peaceful uses of nuclear science and technology for development, especially in enhancing access to cancer diagnosis and indeed treatment. Finally, I would also like to register the country's deep appreciation for the support and I pledge my commitment to assure that the set targets are met and that the rays of hope to cancer patients in Malawi becomes a reality soon. Lastly, let me take this opportunity to make an appeal to all those donors who support Rays of Hope. Your support to Rays of Hope, it is a support to Malawians. Your support to Rays of Hope gives hope to the women in Malawi. Your support to Rays of Hope gives hope to our children who, as we are talking now, they are still in the village, they are still in the world waiting for us to finish the uh, uh, bunker so that at least they can receive uh, chemotherapy. So we want to make an appeal. There are so many uh, people suffering. If Malawi are talking about 5,000, I can imagine Africa, the whole region of Africa, how many are they? You can do the maths. One country I'm talking about over 5,000. 
So it means in Africa, the need is there. So let us you know, uh, work together. Let us hold hands. All of us, we have a vision, a vision of uh, a better world. In Malawi, we have a vision of 2063, whereby we want to see our country to be self-reliant. We want to see our country having moved from a low income to a middle income. But for that to happen, we need Malawians who are health. We need Malawians, when they are sick, they can have access to the services uh, in the health sector. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Kandodo Shiponda, for shining a light on the progress surrounding cancer care in Malawi. As you mentioned, in the 10 millions of deaths around the world, 70% every year happened in Africa, in low and middle income, sorry, in low and middle income countries around the world, 70%. So now, we would like to introduce Dr. Raoul Doria, the head of the National Cancer Institute in Paraguay. Paraguay is also a recipient country of Rays of Hope and received the linear accelerator for radiation treatment last year. Dr. Doria, the floor is yours. Good morning, you all. Wonderful evening. It is a pleasure uh, to have been invited to this distinguished uh, panel uh, of uh, person. Thank you very much, General Director Rafael Grossi and his wonderful team uh, to produce this uh, extremely helpful program of Rate of Rates of Hope. Um, I uh, am the newly director uh, of uh, National Cancer Institute. I was uh, fortunate enough to early in my career uh, be trained uh, in United States where I stayed uh, for uh, 20 years to practice medicine there. Ten years ago, I decided to go back to my country to uh, contribute, uh, treat patients uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, country. Uh, I witnessed firsthand the difference that exists in two systems, the developed country system in cancer care and the underdeveloped cancer care system in Paraguay. I can tell you that the difference is enormous. The gap uh, that we have to bridge uh, is, is, a, is a very challenging uh, uh, proposition. And with the new government, uh, elected government in Paraguay, Mr. President uh, Peña and Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Baram, we are committed to bridge this gap. And the challenges are enormous. The resources are very limited. So we are going to need the help of uh, large organizations such as AIEA. And today we are here to thank the great support that AIEA and uh, D Director General Grossi has been uh, uh, supporting Paraguay for many years. And I briefly gonna describe uh, this support uh, we have the first uh, impact mission in uh, 10 years ago uh, where the document that was developed uh, in this mission helped SICAM. Uh, uh, SICAM uh, is a, a program that was developed by the UICC uh, a year after the impact uh, 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 mission came to, Par to Paraguay. And we were fortunate enough that uh, the UICC selected Asuncion as one of the learning uh, uh, cities uh, for this program. Now, uh, SICAN is a, a fully developed uh, foundation. With the help of the document of uh, impact, uh, we formed a uh, committee that worked in 20 projects uh, uh, for the progress and improvement of cancer care in Paraguay. One of the main uh, uh, projects was to work in advocacy for government. And with this group and working very closely with the government and the Congress, uh, we were able to pass uh, the first comprehensive 
national cancer law uh, in Paraguay, uh, law 6266, that created, uh, transformed the income from a, a specialized hospital to a program that was in charge of all the cancer care policies in the country. And with this uh, formed three pillars. PRONAC is a program for early detection and prevention. Uh, the network for cancer care uh, providers and uh, the program for academic and uh, research. With uh, uh, PRONAC now we are involved in um, a transforming uh, early prevention, uh, early detention and prevention in breast cancer and uh, cervical cancer. And with the network that was formed, we now have nine institutions that provide uh, chemotherapy treatment locally, and we have more than 90% coverage in the country for uh, free chemotherapy for, for, for rural areas. Um, and also we're uh, developing uh, uh, more uh, programs with uh, research and academic. Uh, with the help of uh, the agency, we have many radiation therapists uh, that are training in master program in different uh, countries. One of them is going to return this year to Paraguay to uh, lead the first program of radiation therapy in a rural area. So we're very uh, thankful for all, all this. And uh, also uh, in, in terms of uh, human capacity, but also in equipment, EIEA have provided uh, uh, the first high-dose radiation uh, brachytherapy uh, machine that is now the only program that treat cervical cancer patients in, in, in our country. Uh, we also, this month, uh, are ready to start treating patients with the uh, uh, radiation therapy linear accelerator machine that was uh, donated by uh, AIEA. Uh, and that will help reduce the waiting list from uh, uh, thir three months to zero uh, uh, in, in, in our patients. And we are uh, later uh, this year, we're going to receive the donation of uh, uh, two mammography units that is going to help our uh, early detection breast cancer program uh, be able to treat uh, more uh, breast cancer patients in early stage. Today, unfortunately, more than 50% of the patients that we see in our country are diagnosed in advanced stage. As you know, that's, that's an uncurable condition. Our program is to bring that number to closer to what a developed country is, uh, between 20 and 30%. For that, we're going to need not only uh, more trained uh, 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 technicians, we're going to need more trained radiologists, we're going to need more, more uh, 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 mammography uh, machines. And with this machine that was donated uh, by the agency, it's going to help launch this program. We are currently doing 30,000 30, mammography a year. We want to do this year 600,000 mammographies. So the challenge is enormous. This is going to help. And when you go from uh, more than 50% to uh, less than 50%, you're not only saving life, because early detection means cure. We're also impacting tremendously financial uh, uh, economic impact in the country. So we are very helpful, very um, thankful to the agency, uh, Director General uh, Grossi and his wonderful team that I was able to meet during this visit. Deep from our heart, we thank you and, and we uh, challenge the partners of AIA to continue to support uh, Race of Hope because you are not only helping life, you are saving life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Doria. Dear Minister Kondodo Shipunda, Dr. Doria and Bianca, thank you for sharing your personal and country's insight. Your experience are a testament that results can be achieved, and your call for action, I hope, is heard today. 
This concludes the high-level conversation on the first impact of Rays of Hope. Thank you all. Um, as our distinguished speakers uh, will take their seats in the room, we will play a video on the Rays of Hope initiative. The IAEA's Rays of Hope initiative has made significant strides towards increasing access to cancer care in the two years since its launch. At the start, seven first wave countries were on board. Benin, Chad, Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Malawi, Niger, and Senegal. All face substantial cancer burdens, and like most developing countries, do not have enough access to radiotherapy or medical imaging. Since the launch of Rays of Hope, more than 70 additional countries have requested to join. A number of these have already started receiving tangible support, from radiation therapy and diagnostic machines to training for doctors and technicians. The Democratic Republic of Congo in particular, a country with no radiation facilities, has received IAEA support towards building its first radiotherapy center. Nous allons mobiliser les fonds nécessaires pour faire en sorte que la population congolaise touche pas seulement ceux qui ont les moyens et la possibilité de d'avoir le traitement pour le cancer qui est, qui est indispensable. Other countries across Africa, Asia and Latin America and the Caribbean have also received equipment and training. La salud del pueblo hondureño recibe un rayo de esperanza mediante el apoyo del Organismo Internacional de Energía Atómica con la donación de un acelerador lineal, dos mamógrafos de última generación, dos tomógrafos y una gamma cámara que van a venir a mejorar la salud de los pacientes con cáncer en Honduras. A range of anchor centers are being set up as capacity building and knowledge hubs. The first five were announced at the IAEA's general conference last year in Algeria, Jordan, Morocco, Pakistan and Turkey. Anchor centers will advance cancer care, research and innovation regionally and globally and support the long-term sustainability of Rays of Hope. The next steps are to strengthen partnerships with traditional donors and private companies, add additional funding streams, buy more equipment, train more experts, build more facilities, strengthen anchor centers' capacities, and eventually reach cancer care for all. Progress requires leadership. Leaders set priorities, allocate resources, and drive systemic changes with your leadership we can make the future healthier for everyone.